News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukot Ali. And a very good evening to you and uh, welcome to Newsline Live. Indeed, we are broadcasting live from our studios in Dawson Street in Clambo. And we're delighted to welcome on our program, and uh, no stranger to our program, of course, uh, but uh, the executive director of the Centre for Policy Alternatives, Dr. Pakisoti Saravan Muttu. Very good evening to you. Good evening to you too. And uh, I'd like to ask you straight away, what is this business with the uh, amendment to the Criminal Procedure Code? Hmm. This is, it seems uh, very draconian, uh, but could you explain it in, in, in such a way that uh, the Republic will understand why it's important? Yeah, basically what it says is that you do not get presented in front of a magistrate Right. or a high court judge 48 hours after you have been arrested and conceivably you may not be presented at all. So what this means is, is that there is a time period in which yeah. you can be tortured and given that the Sri Lankan police's record with regard to all of this we all know is pretty bad. It goes, it flies in the face of basic democratic laws, tenets of democratic governance. Every, surely, every person who is accused or taken in by the law enforcement authorities, there must be some kind of check to see that that person is okay, that he's been looked after, all of that. And this dispenses with that. And is it all the time, or is it that if you've been before a magistrate uh, once, presented before the magistrate, and then you get remanded, and then a couple of weeks later, you, the, the police want to extend that, that on the second time round, if you're going to the same magistrate, then, then they, would, they dispense with presenting you before that magistrate? Yes, I think that is the general uh, assumption here. We haven't seen the actual amendment, and right. let's hope that it's not going to be presented and certainly not passed, mm. but we haven't seen that. But I think that's the general assumption. But what what is the need? Why why this um, uh, this need to amend the um, criminal procedure code? That is indeed the million dollar question. Why are they bringing it at this point in time? Now I can only speculate that they expect things to get worse in terms of dissent in terms of demonstrations, all of that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they have this in preparation to prevent anyone from getting proper recourse to the protection of the law of the land. Um, <clears throat> I, I best explain this again. Uh, the proposed amendment to the Criminal Procedure Code, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the proposals would mean that uh, Ordinarily, a person who is remanded would then be presented before a magistrate in, uh, in whatever period, one week or two weeks, uh, whatever that is, and hours. it is proposed that they will not be presented, which means that with this almost uh, uh, penchant for uh, torture by the Sri Lanka police, uh, although there are figures to say that it is not so existent now, but it is definitely we have got several documented cases of torture and assault and so on. And it is imperative that if you are arrested and you are remanded and um, after several days that uh, you, you need to be presented before the magistrate so that they can establish for themselves as to how you look, that you're not missing a couple of teeth and you know, uh, your, your bandage all around. That, that's the point. And also at the time of being uh, arrested, you need to be presented before a magistrate. You can't be kept somewhere else in the in the in the truck of the uh, uh, of the police, for example, where you might have been beaten up, and for the police to tell the uh, magistrate that they want you remanded, and without the magistrate actually seeing you, is have I got that right now? Yes, you have got it right. Right, you have, and, and that's right. why um, uh, we thought we'd bring Dr. Parkinsoti here and discuss uh, how important this is for every one of us in this country, because we are all hopefully ruled by the one law. No, so this is the thing. I mean, the whole question of one law, equality before the law, 
all of that pales into insignificance when a magistrate can decide as to whether, you know, you are considered to be some threat or the other. It's purely arbitrary. Yes, now that, that is the second point. Uh, it, is all, it also suggested that um, they, 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 they can decide, hmm. so it's arbitrary decision, that, um, you know, citizen Bandara can, will turn up uh, and that he can't be brought before the magistrate or the court because he may turn violent exactly. or he may misbehave or do mm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Really, how do they know this? Have they got well, Sumanadas on their side all the time? God knows. Maybe they have some sort of astrologer who is sort of telling them that, look, this is a person who is likely to create, a, create problems or not. But it is, it is at one level ridiculous. At another level, it is highly dangerous as all ridiculous things are, because they are trying to make it the law of the land. And in that sense, it is totally out of whack. So obviously, if you were um, arrested for, uh, in some protest, let's say, mm. all right, and then the, 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 you will be aware of, the, you know, you shall be fearful because you know you're not going before a magistrate because the police will make no. up whatever they want to. The potential for them to make it up is there. Absolutely. And the culture of impunity is right throughout the whole system because in those 48 hours or whatever it yeah. is, they can do any damn thing to you. And there is no recourse. It is deeply worrying. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, I noticed uh, that, uh, this uh, statement that uh, your organization, yeah. the Center for Policy Alternatives, put out. And, and um, it's more than draconian. Who, who, are we trying to follow, which democracy are we trying to follow? Well, I mean, I don't think we're trying to follow any democracy. If there is a jurisdiction where this happens, it's got to be an authoritarian or totalitarian state. Does this I happen in China? Well, are we I'm, following China? Well, we know that the president has talked about how impressive China is and all of that. So maybe he's taken a leaf out of their book. And that's really, really sad because the vestiges of democracy in the oldest democracy in Asia are being stripped away. And the culture of impunity is being given to ride roughshod over everything else. I mean, so, you know, it, it is... You see, I think one of the challenges that all of us have mm. is to make sure that every average citizen in the country understands that this is something that should be of fundamental importance to them. That it's not something that happens to someone else. It could happen to you. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're hearing and what this government, our government, your government, my government, Dr. Uh, Park Yusoti's government and everybody in the control room's government are proposing to do matters. If it matters so much to you, do send us your questions by SMS or by WhatsApp, whichever way you fancy. 0772-300-305, the card's up on your screen, or it will be shortly. Now then, uh, Dr. Park Yusoti, it seems to me that this government are uh, basically gambling. They're gambling with the, with the reputation of this country. Mm -hmm. They're gambling in such a way that the international community will look at Sri Lanka as some sort of pariah state and think that there is no right, there, are, there is no human rights, there are no freedoms of anything. Well, let me say... Aren't they worried about that? They are, but they have a problem. This government lacks coherence and lacks cohesiveness. There are those in this government who want to cooperate with the international community, and there are those who want to continue on the very strong singular nationalist line. Now, the latter, I think, are the ones who are probably supportive of this amendment to the Criminal uh, Justice Procedure the Act, and they want to make sure that they can continue unhampered, unhindered, whilst the foreign ministry perhaps and the president go and make conciliatory noises about talking to the diaspora and all of that. And again, I mean, again, you can see, you know, who in the diaspora are they going to talk to? 
we've been told that they're not going to talk to all of those organizations that have been banned. So then who are they going to talk to? Why haven't they talked to the TNA? You know, they are at sixes and sevens in terms of what it is that they want to do to save their reputation and indeed, most importantly, to salvage this country. But surely these uh, uh, proposed amendments to the Criminal Procedure Code, uh, surely uh, it can't matter whether you are a Hindu, a Buddhist or a Muslim or whether you're Tamil, Sinhalese, Muslim, Berger, surely this transcends all communities and Absolutely, so and what is important about it is this, is, is that it'll be used against, irrespective of caste, community, whatever, anyone who is anti-Rajpaksa. Is that, is, that is that it? I, that is the way I see it. That's the way I see it. What else? Why bring it now? Yeah. You know, what is the purpose of bringing it now? Zero. Unless, of course, there is an expectation that there will be further demonstrations down the line and that the government needs more practices, tricks, as it were, in their armory mm. to deal with it. Well, you know, thank you for your uh, questions, but do, do send us, uh, we, will, we will take them on. Um, but at the moment, it's a bit like, it's a whole series of things. It appears that the president, uh, our president, is being under-informed, or misinformed even, at worst, because you have a series of things. Whilst we are undergoing a genuine shortage of foreign currency, our uh, tourism dollars are down, uh, almost non-existent. Our uh, remittances are also down. The entire world is experiencing all sorts of challenges. And Sri Lanka has now decided to uh, gamble with its food security. The, I'm talking about the fertilizer question. question. It is not by any stretch of anybody's imagination has it been sorted out. So in between all this, we have a delegation that have arrived from the, uh, from the EU uh, about the GSP+. Plus. And it is, the, it is that delegation, that European Union, that have been always concerned about accountability, human rights, and so on. And it's linked to the GSP+. Plus. So in between all this, would you think it's, it's a gamble of the highest order to start gambling and trying to amend this criminal procedure code. Well, you see, I mean, this is the thing, is that either the government is living on its wits yeah. and trying to sort things out into the future so that it doesn't get fall flat, you know, f fall flat on its face, yeah. or there is this sort of good cop, bad cop idea that, look, in order for us to stay in power, we are going to ensure that the law of the land is going to be made to work for us and impunity is going to be, therefore, our major weapon with regard to the whole question of demonstration, demonstrators and demonstrations and all of that kind of thing. So, you know, it's about, at the end of the day, the security, the protection of the Rajapaksa regime. That's what it's about. Well, I say it's um, it's all terribly uh, it's all terribly sort of um, worrying. Mm. It's very uh, worrying. It is very worrying, isn't it? Um, and uh, whilst uh, uh, everybody is enjoying a long weekend, I trust that they will also reflect on what is happening to all of us, because this thing is not just for uh, the drug peddlers and the drug dealers, and certainly it will not appear to uh, uh, impact on the drug importers, hmm. the, the masterminds, uh, because we never see uh, them. We only see the little ones, the sprats, uh, the big fish or the, the big whales are, are hardly ever caught. Um, but on that note, let's go for a break. Let's take a quick peek at uh, the evening's uh, headlines from the News First team. And uh, of course, um, we'll see you on the other side of the break. News, news line with Faraz Shabdali. 
and welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Dr. Parky Soti Saramunamutu from the CPA. Now then, if you do want to send us questions, you may do so by SMS uh, 0772 300 You can also uh, send it by um, WhatsApp if, the, if you so fancy. Now then, you say in your statement, uh, Dr. Saramunamutu, that the CPA is also concerned with the purpose and timing of the bill in a context when Sri Lanka's criminal justice system faces a plethora of challenges requiring urgent attention with no information publicly available and so on. As to why the present bill was received prioritization over other more pressing matters. What, what do you mean exactly? No, so this is the thing. I mean, I can only speculate that the government has a serious expectation of greater public discontent leading to demonstrations, leading to arrests, where this amendment will come into play and where that culture of impunity will again be expanded. And we've had this before in Sri Lanka and we're going to have it again. Why now? What is it on the horizon? And what I can see on the horizon is, as we see today, any number of protests from teachers and all of that, where this will probably be used. So you really, as your statement also says, uh, you are really worried for the safety of detainees and, and uh, you know, that this uh, further entrenches custodial torture. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, when you think about what has happened recently, you take the Lohan Ratvatta case, right? Here is, well, he was then the minister who was in charge of prisons, going and intimidating uh, those poor prisoners at using revolvers and whatever to uh, threaten them. Mm. The Minister of Justice apologizes, but he is still a minister. What has happened to Mr. Atwatta? He has got away with it with impunity at the end of the day. You know, where is the whole question of accountability? Where are the actions that are taken by government which restores our faith in the criminal justice system or indeed in the system of justice as a whole? These are all actions which cumulatively destroy and corrode the basic democratic conventions and tenets of governance. Uh, I have this question for a member of the public. Uh, did President Rajapaksa or does President Rajapaksa actually need a reconciliation with the Tamil diaspora? Well, what I will say is this, is, is that we need reconciliation in this country between all the peoples who inhabit this country. And in that respect, with regard to the Tamil community, yes, the diaspora is an element of that community and it is well worth reaching out to them. Because, let's remember, when we think of the diaspora, we also need to think of the fact that they do have quite a lot of money which can be invested in the north and east of the country, but it has to be done in such a way that they feel that, you know, there is transparency and accountability and all of that. So yes, I do think so, yeah. That they, they need this reconciliation. But where do you see this uh, whole move towards accountability and reconciliation? Is it going to be a years-long thing and, you know, nothing will ever happen? Well... And people have been frustrated into silence and acceptance. Well, I think the point is very simply this, is that there will always be a section of the population who will not give up yeah. on the notion of accountability. And as long as that section is there, accountability will be an issue. As you know, the Office of the High Commissioner now has a unit which is collecting evidence with regard to the whole question of accountability. So it's not going away. It's not going away. Now, as to whether it's going to happen in the next one year or two years or in the next 20 years, that, of course, remains to be seen. But the key point is that there are Sri Lankan citizens who want this accountability. And as long as they are there, 
and holding to the argument of accountability is not going to go away. And uh, uh, Dr. Saruman, we have another question. Uh, we have several, but uh, this one seemed to be interesting. Could it be uh, this, this amendment, could it also mean uh, it's another way to suppress whistleblowers? Well, I mean, I think the amendment is done in order to, as I said, the amendment is to protect the regime. And so from whistleblowers to whoever, yeah. they will be protected if this amendment goes through. So yes, it's quite possible that they are to protect it. Well, I, I'm looking through all these questions. It's uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, so the people do understand how, how terribly important uh, uh, this is, that if it went through the way it is, um, you might as well uh, forget about uh, doing absolutely anything wrong, which, of course, is not a bad thing. You know, you, one mustn't do anything wrong, but then one must, um, one must protest when one feels the urge. No, absolutely. That's a fundamental democratic right of every citizen. What, what, do you, what is your analysis? Why, the real question would be, is the law and order situation so much out of hand that you need these sort of draconian measures? Well, no. I mean, the thing is this, is that it's not anarchy in the country. Mm. However, there are key areas in which there is dissent, there are demonstrations against the government, and those are the key areas which are the barometers, if you like, of the democratic health of government and governance. So once you start attacking them and spreading that culture of impunity, then you don't have anything left in terms of equality before the law and all of that. You know. So it's not a question of sheer anarchy at the present moment. It is a question that more and more people are becoming despondent, depressed, angry, hurt, saddened, all of those things with the performance of the government. And this has been brought to deal with all of that and to deal with it in a way that the overall impact will be to get rid of the fundamental rights and freedoms of citizens. But, you know, we have a prime minister who, uh, in his earlier days, uh, actually went uh, uh, to the UN, went to Geneva. Well, that's right. In the, his earlier days. His earlier days. Yeah. And he went there on the basis that uh, human rights uh, were being violated. So what's changed between then and now? Well, what's changed between then and now is, is that they are in power. They are the government of the day. So and that means that you can do just about what you want? Well, that's what they seem to think. That's what they seem to think. But, and that is why doctor, that has to be resisted. there are elections around the corner. Exactly. There is an economic crisis going yes, on now. Yes, but with regard to elections around the corner, etc., you have to have perhaps a united opposition and all of that kind of thing to have the change of government if for those who want a change of government. you know. So nothing is certain in that respect. But what is certain in terms of the current regime is that it will do whatever is necessary to stay in power and protect itself. What about they will do whatever is possible to ensure an equitable lifestyle for everybody in Sri Lanka, our Sri Lanka? I mean, you know, they can get up and say that, but is anyone going to believe that they are going to ensure an equitable lifestyle? Given that, this family is being accused of amassing wealth, of abusing power. Can anyone actually believe this? What, uh, as the CPA and, and so on, as a sort of uh, looking down and uh, all that business, what do you say to the opposition? Should they just be sitting there waiting for the next election? No, I think, well... The opposition probably does take the view that, look, things are not going well for the government and that the government should make further mistakes and get itself into more of a pickle. But the opposition needs to come together in 
the entirety of the opposition come together and it's very important that the opposition provide a viable alternative. It's not a question of saying, look, the government is offering this at 350 rupees, so let's offer it at 250 rupees. No. no. It has to be a distinct alternative. And I hope that, yeah. you know, for the health of democratic politics, that we will get this. Um, but, uh, uh, Dr. Sarun Mutu, um, the, w surely it is suicidal uh, for the opposition as well to be as sort of separate as they are now. Um, instead, I don't see the opposition members going to the village, going to the rural areas and passing on this message this message that is so important. Yeah. They absolutely have to go and do that. They can't just rely on social media. They can expand the reach of social media, but there is no substitute for the actual going and talking to people. So they have to do that. Are there any po politicians in the opposition camp who you notice are doing that? Well, I mean, I suppose to a certain extent there are some, but there's still a long, long way to go. And what do you think, what, what's your advice to the people? Should they start emailing, messaging their, uh, their members of parliament, their ministers? What do you think they ought to be doing? Well, I mean, the point is this, is, is that, look, in August 2020, we voted in a general election, yeah. and we voted for people to represent us. Therefore, we need to make sure that that's exactly what they do. So we need to be badgering them with our concerns, with our grievances, with our aspirations. So that that whole point about the legislature being the vehicle of the people to make laws in this country, that is actually fulfilled. We can't ignore them. But doctor, for example, it is tantamount to criminal criminal uh, neglect uh, when we can't seem to sort out the uh, Easter bombing issue, for example. No, absolutely. Absolutely. That is absolutely. That 255 is, people died. So many that's lives quite scandalous. changed forever. That's quite scandalous. And the Cardinal has said that the President told him, President Rajapaksa told him that uh, he can't implement the recommendations of the Commission report because that would make him politically unpopular. I mean, I just find that absolutely appalling. Dr. Who Parker cares Sothi. about whether he's going to be unpopular or not? We want Over 250 people were killed. The law is the law is the law. Absolutely. Dr. Parky Sothi Saramunilti, thank you very much for being on Newsline Live. And it's now time for the uh, primetime news from that brilliant team at News First. And uh, as always, God bless you.